Right, we are live. <laughs> yes, we are alive and live. Thanks for joining us. There's a weird thing happening here that's bothering me. Okay, better. I'm I was that was distracting me. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for being here. And uh yeah, so hmm uh a, a new uh, exploration for for me tonight and perhaps for you as well and a little bit of a different way at a at a practice so here's the backstory seems sometimes these things have backstory or context that I like to uh, share uh, of how this arose in my awareness and um, giving credit where it's due so um, I saw this um, content creator, I think is what they call themselves. <laughs> I guess I am too. Uh, uh, goes by the name Kai. Um, and their full name is Ty Kevin. I don't, I haven't heard them say their last name. So it's Q-I-E, Kui or Q. Um, and then they have MD after their name, a doctor. Um, but they go by Hi Coach Kai. I've put their website down below of the YouTube recording and here in the chat. And so they do a lot of, I don't know their pronouns, but they do a lot of uh, TikTok and Instagrams. I'm not on the, the talking tick, but... Uh, uh, so I saw a short little post on Instagram from this creator, Kai, Coach Kai. Uh, and it really touched me because they were they were really moved by this word and its meaning. And, and it really uh, touched their heart to the extent that they got a tattoo of it on their inner wrist. I'm like, oh, no, don't give me more tattoo ideas, please. <laughs> running out of real estate and uh but it it's it 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 um touched a thread in them to the extent that they wanted to have that reminder really uh front and center which uh, i think says a lot and so uh the word and i'll obviously explain its meaning the word is sonder S-O-N-D-E-R, Sonder, kind of like wonder, but with an S, Sonder. And um, you may not have heard of this word because it is a neologism, which means a newly created word, a newly coined expression or word. And so the person that coined this word uh, is John Koning. K-O-E-N-I-G, Koning, who wrote this book called The Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, which is so brilliant. Love that. Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. I mean, what, what a great thing to create. <laughs> so this author, creator, uh, John Koning, was in school um, at the time and was trying to write poetry. I forget what year it was. Trying to write poetry. And they there were things they wanted to describe, uh, emotions and um, couldn't find the words in, in the English dictionary that, that really captured the essence of what they were wanting to convey in their poetry. Um, and so this gave birth to the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. Um, so it's this compendium of emotions that hadn't been linguistically described before. All right, that's uh, some of the backstory here. So this word sonder, uh, John Koning describes it as, or defines it as both a noun and a verb meaning um it's it's like the word wonder in that in that sense so you you can wonder as an action 
and something can be a wonder or I wonder or um, like the wonder of a child it's more like a thing the wonder or I wonder how many times I've said that <laughs> so both a, both a, a thing and an action saunder and the short definition of saunder is the awareness that everyone has a story. So good. Um, let me just let this person in. Uh, the awareness that everyone has a story. And um, it comes from the French root of sonde, meaning to plumb the depths. I'm not a French speaker. This is what uh, the context that, that the author made, uh, John Koning, to plumb the depths. Uh, so, so the, the, I've put a link uh, down below and I'll put it here in the chat again to a beautiful YouTube video of the author uh, really filling out this definition with a sweet, beautiful little video. Um, but I'm going to read that definition to you. And I, it's a little bit of a mashup from the book and from some other, like the audio version is slightly different, but very similar. That just felt like a lot of rambling. Okay. So... We have this word, sonder, meaning the awareness that everyone has a story. And then in in uh, other contexts, it's a, this book's available on Audible and in the video, there's a more fulsome definition, which goes like this. Um, you are the main character, the protagonist, the star at the center of your own unfolding story. This is so true. If you pay any amount of time to the content of the mind stories that's constantly streaming all day long, you will likely find, I certainly have, that you are the central character all the time. Even if it's something about someone else, it's still what you like about them, what you don't like, what you think they should do, how you think it should be. Um, even if it's something that's already happened, it's our context of it, 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 past, future, present, there's always a central character and it's always number one. Um, even if you're putting yourself down all the time, it's still central character. So. This is a part of this human habit, human experience. When we're not seen clearly, when we're just caught in our grooves, we are the main character. The star at the center of our own unfolding story. And we are surrounded by our supporting cast, friends and family that hang out in your immediate orbit. So you can picture that you're the center, the star, you have your immediate circle and then scattered a little bit further out of that circle is a network of acquaintances who drift in and out of contact over the years, right? So some people you see occasionally or hear from or they come into your life more actively for a while and then um, float out for all the various infinite reasons. And then lastly, there in the background, further back from those acquaintances that are scattered, faint and out of focus are the extras, the extras in our drama, in our play, in our storyline, the random passers-by. Each 
living a life as vivid and complex as your own. So this is, again, Sonder, the awareness that everyone has a story. So here we are connecting awareness with this boundless awareness that everyone has as much complexity and depth as each of us individuals. They carry on invisibly around you, bearing the accumulated weight of their own ambitions, friends, routines, mistakes, worries, triumphs, and inherited craziness, his words. When your life, when our individual lives move on to the next scene, there's flickers in place, wrapped in a cloud of backstory and inside jokes and characters strung together with countless other stories you'll never be able to see. I love this description. An epic story that continues invisibly around you like an anthill sprawling deep underground with elaborate passageways to thousands of other lives that you'll never know existed, in which you might appear only once as an extra sipping coffee in the background, as a blur of traffic passing on the highway, as a lighted window at dusk. In the little video on YouTube, you know, they... They have this uh, cityscape with the high rises and towers. I just was in Toronto last weekend, uh, uh, downtown in a tower of apartments and surrounded by infinite towers that just get bigger and bigger. And um, in the video, they just show, you know, this one light coming on in one of those little windows in the sea of windows. And it's like that lighted window at dusk and then they show like the traffic of streaming highway and you know someone just passing by on the highway so he's really filling out this amazing description of this vast beyond what we can conceive vast web of beings that are connected to us that we are mostly, largely, often unaware of. And that comes at a cost. <laughs> that lack of awareness has an effect. So in the Dharma, there's um, an awareness and several practices that include what in the Dharma are called neutral beings. And uh, this is most people, like these thousands and thousands of interrelated beings. Most of the people in your day are um, neutral, neutral. Wherever you're driving and walking or being or in your building or even on the TV, they're usually not, uh, even though it seems <laughs> we have more attachment to the people we like and the people we don't like. So it seems like this is what's mostly in our lives, friendly people and unfriendly people the people we feel a gratitude and heart connection with and the people that we're in a struggle with, conflict. And we notice these more because they're so charged. We're, we have a, um, a connection, whether it's a liking or an aversion, it's still a strong connection. But actually, when we pay attention, we notice most people are neutral. We don't even notice them. Unless we like them or don't like them, then we notice. <laughs> so 
as he says, uh, John Koenig, in the beginning of his description of Sonder, mo uh, the predominant awareness in most of our days is of ourselves and our story and our people and our, um, you know, yeah, our unfolding story. Uh, And uh, that can be a very painful place to be because we're just fueling our likes and our dislikes. We The world gets very small and contracted. We get uh, kind of tight around what we want and what we don't want and how we want things to be, who we want to be, when we're only paying attention to that inner drama with ourselves at the center. And opening up the heart-mind awareness to wider and wider circle opens the heart. Conditions and uh, cultivates compassion and interconnectedness, which can help us have some perspective and uh, help us uh, open the heart. So um, this phrase I mentioned of neutral beings comes from the practices of what's called the Brahma Viharas, the divine abodes, the mm, abiding place of heartful intention and awareness. And in the Brahma Viharas, there's four practices that we cultivate. One of these is called metta, which is the cultivation, the growth, the desire to hmm, more friendliness, more kindness, more um, benevolence, sometimes called more uh, heartful good wishes for ourselves and other beings. Another one of these Brahma Vihara practices is called Karuna, which means compassion. And this is the heart, the aware heart responding to the suffering of others. Those we're dear with, the suffering of those we also dislike and the suffering of neutral people and eventually all beings. So this uh, cultivates our ability to respond to the suffering of others. The third Brahma Vihara practice is called Mudita. And this is resonant harmonic joy. So that when something is going well for someone else, mm, Rather than my heart contracting around why why are they winning the lottery again? <laughs> Jealousy or comparison or mm, feeling a sense of lack. Uh, mudita practice wishes, may your joy, may your good fortune grow and continue. And it counters the contraction of our own heart. This is just like a lot, I know, but I just want to give some context to these. The last of these Brahma Vihara practices is called Upeka, and this means equanimity. So this is a cultivation, the growth in our own awareness of a steadiness amidst the waves of life, the gain and loss, the pain and joy, the uh, oh, the other vicissitudes just flew away. Um, blame and praise. And uh, there's another two. I know, Mike is thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so equanimity 
is the cultivation of our, uh, for ourselves and ourselves in relation to others of a steadiness amidst the arisings and passings of life. All right, now, I love that ant hill image because it's both grounding and widening, like this deep and then spreading out all these interconnected tunnels that help us ground our awareness. Uh, you know, when we're caught in our our the drama, this idea of like grounding, like tree roots down and wide opening to an awareness of all beings or in this case we're going to practice with neutral beings the ones we don't usually pay attention to which is almost everyone <laughs> and it's interesting because sonde the french root means to plumb the depths according to John um the and you know this uh this grounding and and uh the depth of our experience that that is often lost to us okay so okay what else do I want to say there it is thank you uh gain the it, when I was mentioning equanimity practice with the vicissitudes, um, my friend here on Zoom has uh, shared gain and loss is one of the like up and down, uh, fame and disgrace or disrepute, uh, um, praise and blame. Yeah, those were the ones that sound very similar uh, and pleasure and pain. Fame and disrepute. Praise and blame. Yeah. Pleasure and pain. Thank you. Um, so for the practice tonight, I'd like to saunder with you. <laughs> I'd like to um, cultivate our awareness that everyone has a story. And this helps us... Uh, open our awareness and feel this sense of shared care and compassion and connection. And through this practice, I'm going to guide us actually through all four of these Brahma Viharas, those four heart practices with just neutral beings. Um, yes, that's the plan. Is there more? Yes. Um, thanks for asking. <laughs> this practice, there's many beautiful examples. Sharon Salzberg shares a lot in her books and stories and uh, other teachers that have uh, worked with this practice like in, internally in relationship to someone that doesn't know you're doing this practice with them in your awareness, in your heart mind. And it's, it's very interesting how people feel it. <laughs> they notice it. So, um, gosh, um, well, for myself, uh, it's helpful when you're working with this neutral being. It's just a category of beings, roughly. Uh, it can be helpful to work with one person for a while that kind of stands in for all the neutral people. So, for instance, there's this gas station that I mm, use fairly often. And um, it's, it's actually very hard to find... To, uh, truly 
neutral because I have so much judgment and preferences in this habit body uh, that I like or dislike people. Uh, there's always some degree of judgment when I've noticed them. But this is just kind of a a person I don't really hadn't really paid attention to and didn't have a strong opinion around. And so I just worked with that person. And without them ever knowing what I'm doing in my meditation practice, it transforms my heart mind so that over time, I felt a lot of care and compassion and love for this person just because I I was untethering the my own limitations in my awareness and so a neutral person when you practice this way moves into the category of a friendly person you feel a friendliness with them and sometimes often that other person will feel that they'll notice even though nothing, you don't necessarily say anything differently, but there's something that gets picked up. And uh, there's lots of beautiful stories about this that I won't go into because I'm rambling enough. Um, I might share one later. Yeah. I think that's enough. Yes. Okay. So let a thunder <laughs> um, adjust your posture and whatever you need for wakefulness and ease, comfort, kindness with yourself. So as I mentioned, these this is a Brahma Vihara practice. It's a heart cultivation practice. And it's important that you start with kindness to yourself. Because if you're already being mean to yourself, you're probably not going to be able to cultivate kind wishes for someone else. So adjust your lighting, your posture, your space, so that you feel some ease and support and comfort for yourself. I'm going to have a drink of water. Look at the size of that bottle. It's bigger than my head. Holy wow. So pretty though. It's got a lotus on it. <laughs> Thank you, dear friends. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So take your time to just land with yourself. It might be some movement or looking around your space so that you feel safe and at ease where you are. It might be some deeper breaths. or some touch, a comforting touch as you just land meeting yourself here and now. Could be a hand on the heart or on the belly. One of my favorite comforting touches for myself is holding my face like this. And when you're ready, finding a resting place for your eyes so that the eyes could rest downward or closed. Just removing any outer distractions or the eyes could rest on an object of beauty that without, uh, without active eyes, without looking, but just uh, resting the eyes.
And let's just, as we're arriving, you might connect to some degree to the feeling that was described at the beginning here of hmm, how it feels in the body, not judging this experience, just recognizing, oh, I've been pretty much the star of this unfolding story. The main character, and that's natural, is part of the human experience, but what does it feel like in the body? You might feel a sense of swirling all around you, particularly around the head. Feel how you're surrounded or by your supporting cast of friends and family that are in your immediate orbit. And how that experience might feel a little bit tight or small or limited. And then we'll begin to plumb the depth, like grounding down, dropping awareness down, feeling like the tailbone is like the roots of a tree. Or like that anthill tunneling down, 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 deep underground. As you do this, the shoulders drop, face softens, the belly lets go a little bit or more. Dropping down. And then widening. Elaborate passageways, thousands of other lives that we'll never know, but that are gently touching our lives, passing by. We're actually just a background character in thousands of other stories. And what does that feel like in the body? That sense of dropping down and wide, spacious awareness. This can also be felt as a vast web, as Indra's web, an infinite web. And then bring into this embodied heart-mind awareness a being that is standing in for all of the neutral beings. So this would be someone that you do cross paths with in your life, not just a figure, but uh, perhaps in a store or in your building, at work, um, neighborhood, somebody that you see once in a while and you don't have a strong like or dislike. 
you most often don't even notice them or much about them. Try not to think about it too much or struggle too much. Just trust what comes to you. You don't have to overanalyze it. Just trust who's arising. And then let yourself really connect to kind of where you see them and, you know, bringing their awareness into your, your heart. So this might be an image or just a felt experience. You might likely not even know their name. And then as we wish for ourselves and for loved ones and ultimately all beings, as we wish to be happy, peaceful, we cultivate this wish with this neutral being. In your own heart mind, repeating internally and feeling the wish, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. And may you be peaceful. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. And then you can continue repeating these phrases or just rest with that feeling of metta, of friendly kindness in relationship to this neutral person. And then, as we know that we experience suffering, and all beings experience suffering to different degrees at different times, but we all experience loss and sorrow and things not being how we want them to be, this neutral person also wishes to be free of suffering. And so now we practice karuna with them in awareness. May you be free from pain and sorrow. Picture them or feel their presence in your awareness as much as you can. Just this same person. May you be free of pain and sorrow. May you be free of pain and sorrow.
May you know some ease with this difficulty. And then continue with these phrases, wishes, this cultivation of wishing, of inclining the heart towards the ending of their suffering. May you be free of pain and sorrow. May you know ease with this difficulty. Feel your own heart-mind awakening, loosening, untethering in relationship to this neutral and all neutral beings for their suffering to be eased. And then check in with yourself now, feeling grounded, present. How is this feeling in your own heart, mind, awareness, citta, to be connecting with others in this way? widening our cast of characters in our storyline. And now the practice of mudita, this harmonic joy in the success or achievement or happiness of others. And so this neutral person that we're practicing with also, at times, experiences good fortune and success or happiness. And we cultivate the wish for that to grow for them. I'm happy for your success or achievement. May your happiness grow and continue. I'm happy for your happiness. May your happiness grow and continue. I am happy for your success, your skill, your achievement. And may this happiness grow and continue. Practice with this for a little bit.
And feel how this feels in your own body, in your own heart, mind, awareness. And if reaction comes up with any of these or contraction or thoughts, that's fine. That's okay. We just let that arise and pass and we continue to cultivate uh, this skillful intention. And then the last of these heart abode practices is upeka or equanimity. And that even as we wish for ourselves to find some steadiness through these waves that will continue to come, that are coming of good and bad and praise and blame and gain and loss, we know that others are experiencing the same. And now we cultivate with this same neutral person, these skillful intentions, inclining the heart. With the understanding that each of us, our own reactivity, is what can cause us more suffering. So in connection with this neutral being, you, your happiness or your unhappiness depends upon your own actions, not on my wishes for you. May you be calm and non-reactive. May you respond skillfully. May you know steadiness amidst these waves. May you be calm and non-reactive. May you develop steadiness amidst the waves. Continue to picture this person, this neutral being, or feel that connection in your own awareness with them. And as each of us has our own deep, deep and wide web of connections, near and far, this neutral being also has thousands of interconnections in their life and each of those beings and each of those and each of those. This nearly infinite web 
of largely unseen beings. that are largely not in our awareness as much as it is possible have a felt experience of opening way beyond what you can conceive of Connections just keep sprawling outward and exponentially vast. And from your own heart mind, may all the neutral beings this sondering, the awareness that everyone has a story. All these beings that our life is touching, seen and unseen. May you be happy. May you be safe, wider and bigger than you can conceive of, just a felt experience. May all these neutral beings be well. May you be peaceful. Just rest here for another minute in this web. And then just a pause, a moment of connecting with how does this feel in your own body, heart, mind? What's the sensation of this practice? May all beings everywhere be free from suffering. Thank you for joining this practice with us please check the links below to um, coach Kai and uh, that introduced me to this uh, Sonder and um, and to John Koenig the um, that wrote the dictionary of obscure sorrows I think there's going to be more of these coming <laughs> I love it uh, yeah 
and there will also be a link down below to uh, upcoming New Year's retreat if you're in um, well even if you're not nearby you can come <laughs> so check that out thanks for joining us